So this video is about VI graphs, where we look at what current flows through components as you change the voltage across them. So in all three graphs, uh, the voltage, your independent variable is the x-axis. The thing you're measuring, current, is the dependent variable, that's the y-axis. Uh, the next thing is to quickly look at Ohm's law that governs this kind of behavior, V equals IR. Um, if you think about that and reinterpret it a different way, uh, you get to the conclusion that the gradient of the line is inversely proportional to the resistance. So high resistance means a low gradient, and low resistance means a high gradient. So bearing that in mind, let's first look at the simple version. The resistor, it's an ohmic conductor. That means if you double the voltage, you double the current through it. The resistance doesn't change, and you get a straight line. Nice and straightforward. Uh, the diode. This is a funny one to sort of remember, but basically the principles we've just talked about here will help you remember it. If you have a voltage going the wrong way and you're trying to drive a current backwards through a diode, it won't, it won't play. So you get infinite resistance and a flat line. Past a certain threshold point, it lets the current flow with very low resistance, so you get a steep line. So that's the explanation for that one. Now the important one, the filament lamp. If you have a, a filament lamp and you're driving a current through it, the wire inside, very thin wire, will start to heat up. As you'll know from other things, the hotter the wire becomes, the more resistance it becomes, and so the flatter the gradient on this line becomes. So more and more voltage, more and more current, more and more resistance, and it flattens off, and it starts to resist increased current through it. The same in the negative direction, and that's why you end up with this S-shaped curve. That's a really important one to remember. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.